The existence of darkness persists even when there is no one left to fight in a war or to die, even when all forms of life have ceased to exist. What am I talking about? Hold your horse and welcome to another marvelous episode where we explore the multiverse's wonders in great detail. Today we'll discuss the Great Darkness, a force that has dogged the cosmos from the dawn of existence. The Great Darkness was supposedly compelled to flee into the shadows when the words Let There Be Light were spoken, where it remained inactive for aeons. But now that it has risen once more, it poses a threat to to destroy everything we value with its evil influence. Join us as we look into the myths and tales related to the Great Darkness and learn the real history of this formidable force. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. What is the Great Darkness in DC? Exploring its origins and backstory. Pack your bags, folks. We're headed back to the dawn of time itself. Picture a world before anything existed, before light, before sound, before anything. All that remained was an endless void of darkness so vast that even light couldn't penetrate it. But then a spark of hope emerged from the void, growing with each passing moment until the light became everything we know and love today. However, darkness wasn't content with this new order. It let out a scream so powerful that it tore a hole in the fabric of reality birthing the Omniverse. And lurking in the shadows of this newly formed reality was the Great Darkness, a malevolent force created by comic book legends Alan Moore and Stan Watch. This off-screen deity was worshipped by human followers known as the Brujeria, who sought to awaken it and reclaim the universe. But there's more to the story than meets the eye. In Justice League Incarnate Issue 4, we're given a glimpse into the true shape of this terrifying force, and it's not pretty. The Great Darkness is determined to return everything to the void of nothingness, where it once reigned supreme. It is now a world of darkness and light, heroes and villains, and a fight for the universe's soul. The ancient darkness arose from the emptiness, developing consciousness, and quickly transforming into a fearsome force that even the most courageous heroes could not destroy. Etrigan, Dr. Fate, and the Spectre were all lured into darkness, where they taught it the secrets of evil, despicability, and revenge. Swamp Thing, on the other hand, took a different strategy. He taught darkness that good and bad were two sides of the same coin, and that neither could exist without the other. Soon, in a bizarre turn of events, darkness stretched out to heaven, and the light, to everyone's surprise, reached back. The two powers united, reshaping the world. The agreement between dark and light was reliant on the multiverse remaining limited to one unified world, yet good and evil would exist indefinitely, and the darkness falling into an eternal sleep. Or as it appeared, even as the great darkness slumbered, its influence remained strong, with its puppets secretly working to weaken the universe and snuff out the light. Strangely, none of them were aware of their connection to darkness. Their relentless attacks culminated in a crisis that shattered the lone universe giving birth to the multiverse we know today. This shattered the peace treaty between the evil darkness and the light of life, and the light dispatched monitors to manage and limit the new multiverse to 52 worlds in an attempt to slow the great darkness's awakening. But despite their efforts, it was only a matter of time before darkness would once again rise to threaten all of creation. The Great Darkness as explored through the events of Dark Crisis. The Dark Crisis is an epic finale into the DC Universe and something you can't afford to miss. It all begins with Pariah, who is an intelligent extraterrestrial being and desires to exploit the Darkness's power, constructs custom-made prisons for multiverse superheroes within their heads using their own desires. Everyone, especially Pariah, thought the Great Darkness was manipulating him and using him as its voice. Whereas it turns out, Pariah was a bit of a nut job. The voices in his head were his own creation, although he did tap into a tiny fraction of the power of the Great Darkness. That is about it. What he thought were the commands of the Great Darkness were simply his own desires. While the Hand created the multiverse, Darkseid's injured godhead is restored, allowing him to embark on a new attempt to seize the evil force of the Great Darkness to serve his interests, using the reincarnated Roy Harper, a champion in archery, and a mind-controlled Barry Allen. As his objectives were foiled, he revealed that the crisis was just around the corner. During the Dark Crisis, Pariah was able to manipulate Darkseid by using darkness to open a multiversal crack and give it to the Empty Hand, who used it to create a fracture into Multiverse 2. Meanwhile, Slade Wilson, also known as Deathstroke, had a vision of the impending danger and vowed to fight against darkness. He took over trust and prepared for battle, but Geoforce's plan led to Slade's death and subsequent resurrection under the control of the Great Darkness. As a result, he became a general for Pariah during the Dark Crisis crisis on Earth. The Justice League Dark observed the darkness was behaving bizarrely by recruiting and commanding an entire battalion of supervillains. They sent John Constantine and a team to investigate the darkness, but Constantine pulled away and was told by the darkness that it had no intention of destroying the multiverse. The team found Pariah's antimatter chamber at the core of the darkness. 
What makes the Great Darkness so powerful? The true power of the Great Darkness can be thoroughly understood from the sacred texts revealed to us. The comic books, of course. Remember the times when not just the heroes, but the evilest villains couldn't handle even a speck of the Great Darkness's wrath? Let me take you through it. The power of the Great Darkness is wild and unimaginable as it took over the most powerful beings in the DC Universe. Let's explore the power of the Great Darkness. In the Justice League Incarnate Issue 5, the god of evil, Darkseid, was turned into a mere pawn of the Great Darkness. When it took over, even Darkseid was no match for it. The Great Darkness literally took him prisoner as he tried to fight back. It was like trying to catch a ghost. But that's not all. The Great Darkness has another power that's just as terrifying. It has the ability to implant doubt and fear in the minds of those who come into contact with it. In the Dark Crisis issues, John Kent and other characters enter Alan Scott's magical Green Lantern ring, which is connected to the Great Darkness. As they enter the ring, they find themselves in a dark fortress-like structure. This appears to be the point for direct communication with the Great Darkness. Here's where things get really interesting. Jonathan Kent tries to to use his gravity-defying powers to fly off, but they just don't work in this magical realm. The Great Darkness has the ability to neutralize even the most powerful beings. Jonathan Kent's powers seem to have been cut off, but why? Could it be because he and Superman are weak to magic? Or is there something else at play here? It's a mystery that we'll have to explore in another video. As they journey on foot thanks to the Great Darkness, doubt starts to creep in, especially when they notice Raven, the daughter of the evil Trigon and a powerful witch. They start questioning whether she's the reason behind their powerlessness and even find themselves walking in circles. That's right, they're going nowhere. And if that wasn't enough, even Swamp Thing starts to revert to its human form. The Great Darkness controls their powers and manipulates their perception of reality. It is quite evident that the dark negative energy infiltrates and penetrates Jonathan and Swamp Thing. This energy turns them against Raven, who they believe is the reason why their powers don't work and why they're walking in circles. But here's the thing, it's not arbitrary or logical. It's actually designed to show how corrupted they're becoming by the power of darkness that twists everything it touches. So much so, they start attacking Raven and try to destroy destroy her. But Raven being the badass witch she is, uses her powers to subdue Jonathan Kent and free him from the corruption of the darkness. As they progress, they reach their destination. However, Raven is hesitant to enter the tower because of the immense power of the great darkness that lurks inside. She warns her friend that if she enters, she will be immediately corrupted by its dark energy. She explains that while it may be a good idea if they approach it. Now here's the reality of the situation. Even if Jonathan and Swamp Thing enter the tower, they will be corrupted relatively fast. In fact, they won't be able to achieve their goal because the power of darkness is so great that it starts to override the very light that they possess. Finally, Swamp Thing and John decide to merge and create a kind of hybrid between them. They finally enter the Dark Tower and find an antimatter chamber at its core. This machine later turns out to be the leading cause of the crisis. Is the Great Darkness really evil? The Great Darkness is the very representation of all evil itself. According to the comic books, the Great Darkness existed even before the creation of the Greater Omniverse. It was the antithesis of God himself and sought to extinguish the light of creation. It's hard to imagine that such an all-encompassing entity of evil could exist, but that's precisely what the Great Darkness is. Furthermore, some of the most notorious villains in the comic book universe were created directly or indirectly by the Great Darkness. Names like Darkseid, Mr. Mind, Superboy Prime, and the Anti-Monitor are all linked to the Great darkness in one way or another. It's almost as if this entity is a womb for all things evil. Darkseid was one of the few who knew about the existence of the Great Darkness and played a pivotal role in stopping the Anti-Monitor during the first crisis. As the god of all evil, Darkseid had a unique understanding of the Great Darkness that few others possessed. He knew that it was indifferent to concepts like good and evil, life and death. The only thing that the Great Darkness truly desired was to make everything into nothing once again. Is the Erebos deadlier than the Great Darkness? In Greek mythology, Erebos represented the very darkness and was regarded as one of the most ancient deities. However, in a modern twist, Darkseid harnessed the power of the anti-life equation to unleash this primordial darkness upon the world. In the battle between the two formidable forces of evil, the Great Darkness and Erebos, it seems that the latter has emerged victorious. While the Great Darkness has managed to exert its influence over some of the most powerful beings in the DC Universe, including Darkseid and Doomsday, Erebos has taken control of even more formidable formidable opponents such as Superman and Wonder Woman. In the catastrophic deceased storyline, Erebos has achieved what the Great Darkness never could, the utter destruction of some of the most beloved heroes in the DC Universe. While the Great Darkness was content to merely trap the Justice League in alternate worlds, Erebos had no qualms about outright killing Batman, Barry Allen, and Wonder Woman. The superiority of Erebos' power over the Great Darkness is indisputable. 
Conclusion In conclusion, the Great Darkness is a formidable force of evil that has existed since before the creation of the Greater Omniverse. Its ultimate goal is to extinguish the light of creation and return the universe to a state of nothingness. Through its influence, it has created some of the most evil beings in the DC Universe, including Darkseid and the Anti-Monitor. While it may seem invincible, there have been those who were able to stand against it, such as Darkseid himself and the heroes of the Justice League. However, as the emergence of Erebos has shown, there may be an even greater darkness waiting in the shadows. The Great Darkness may be a timeless concept, but the battle against it continues to rage on, and only time will tell who will ultimately emerge victorious. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!